just, uh, quickly. In one man, a story and a struggle replicated over and over. It is a mental trauma for sure, but a physical one too. His name is Hawahi Roshka. His friends call him Gosha, and he's one of a staggering number of Ukraine's new army of amputees. We are thousands of miles from the front line in Maryland, in the United States, at a small, unassuming clinic. Mike, Hello, how are you? Good. Mike Corcoran is the boss here. What he sacrificed for Ukraine is, mm -hmm. you know, is very commendable, and what we want to do is get him back as whole as possible. Absolutely. And uh, yes. we'll have fun on the way. Yep, <laughs> we'll try it. Thank you. He has a good sense of humor, too, you know. <laughs> Gosha has been in America for just a few days to be treated here and paid for by charities. Today, the first step in making him feel more complete again. Can you try that again? Yeah. This is the power button here. It's a knock of включения. It's like Terminator. The staff here have spent two decades treating American soldiers maimed in Iraq and Afghanistan. Gosha is the 39th Ukrainian soldier to be helped here. He's among a fortunate fraction from an extraordinary number to have lost limbs in this war. The number isn't official, but there's been pretty accurate information that it's, it's north of 25,000 injuries and some of them are multiple limb loss as you've seen it, that's a stadium full of amputees you think about that and it, you know there's it takes time to treat each individual and it's not something you treat and they're done it's a continuum back to the operation in conversation with gosha a picture of his battle one which has defined the war the siege at the azovstal steelworks 16 months ago the mortar shelling began, and we went into one of the houses. It was like cover to wait until the shelling is over. I didn't even manage to turn around completely, and I got fragments in my shoulder. It severed the artery. It was a lot of blood. Vasyan started applying the tourniquet, we removed my body armor, I passed out several times. I asked Vasyan, finish me off. And listen to this, reflections of the bunker where he lived and where he was treated. The bunker, uh, it's like a cellar, a cellar room. There was a corridor, a small one. And I mean, they're cutting someone's arm and you're watching it. Everybody is watching it. On the floor, there was a bag with arms, legs. That's how it was. I, I can't imagine, it sounds horrific. If you watch a horror movie, you will see something similar there. As for his friend Vasyan, who wouldn't finish him off, well, he is held by the Russians now, fate unknown, and with their dog. This guy never leaves my head. He's my sworn brother. He had a dog, her name was Sofa, a pit bull. It was cold in the bunker. We made beds for ourselves and we put the dog between us in the middle and we slept like that, hugging, so the dog could get some warmth. We were always together with Vasyan and I promised him, I said, when we return back home, when I baptize my son, you will be the godfather. And my son is five years old now. He has not been baptized yet. I'm waiting for Vasyan to return because I promised to make him godfather. In another room, another soldier and another struggle. Ilya, both arms amputated by the Russians, by fighters from the Wagner Group. They cut off his both arms, even though his left one wasn't that badly injured. And they didn't even close him up, they didn't suture him up, they just put bandaged him up. So if you saw his arms, his residual limb, it's not clean. It's like just... The, the bone, the cut end of the bone is like pretty much protruding, right? His good news is that he's ready now to return home. We'll see you in Kiev. Kiev. Nice. Gosha will be here for several more weeks and then months of recovery. Yes. Back with his wife and children in Ukraine. No, no, no.
Mark Stone, Sky News in Maryland.